The horses have now reached the starting point. And they're loading into the gate for the Queen's Plate. Dees Wando going in. Dark Cloud Dancer in that white cap loading along with Mobilizer. They're loading two at a time. Canada. Silks. Seven to two. Our mobilizer. They're at the post. They're off in the Queen's plate. Big red to Mike. Hotep showing early speed. Ghost Fleet comes on between horses. And who are we gonna call? Angles to the outside of Big Red Mike as a crush of runners move in front of us for the first time. And it's a big red Mike and on the extreme outside, Hotep is close to the pace. Dark Cloud Dancers on the heels of Big Red Mike. Ghost Fleet is tucked in between horses and Mobilizer is just to the outside of Ghost Fleet. Then who we gonna call who's behind that uh, trio? Ronin is drafting in behind runners. The other Philly Moment of Majesty is close to the pace just outside of Ronin ish. Then Mob the Warrior and a Vicar Street Giants Tomb will put his run in late. Dees Wando is second to last and Smart Sky Trails. And they move into the backstretch. The half was in 49 and 1. That's not a hot pace. And it's a big red mic. Eureka Rosa da Silva trying to harness his speed. And Hotep is breathing down his throat. Mobilizer is clear of trouble on the outside in third position and Dark Cloud Dancer is down on the rail in a fourth. Ghost Fleet is between horses. Moment of Majesty. Mob the Warrior is out wide. David Morin sends the Oaks winner Ron Inish up between Mobilizer and Dark Cloud Dancer. Less than three eighths to go in the Queen's Plate. Big Red Mike leads through a come and get me mile. Hotep's put the pressure now. Mob the Warrior is on the extreme outside. Roan Inish in with a big shot. And flying around horses on the far outside. Here comes Moment of Majesty. It is still Big Red Mike. He's running his eyeballs out. Hotep on the outside. Roan Inish and Mob the Warrior. Big Red Mike trying to hold on for one more 16th. Big Red Mike has scored a smashing victory to win the Queen's Plate. Hotep was second. Finishing third was Roan Inish and Giants Tomb was fourth. The unofficial result of the 10th race, the winner number five, Big Red Mike. Number 11, Hotep was second, a 10, Roninish was third, and eight, Giants Tomb was fourth. The running time, 204 and four fifths.
Renee. Back to back Queen's plates for Eurico Rosa de Silva. You know, it's unbelievable. What's first come to my mind today is the first time I was on the horse and I remember the smell. And you know what? It was a long, long road, but God is good to me. And this horse runs so hard today. You know, I'm so proud of him. Before I cry, good luck to everybody! The game plan with the track being so speed favoring tonight was just probably not, this afternoon, not change a thing. Let him do what he did in the plate trial, put him on the point and see what happens. You know what, he, he's, he run very relaxed. And uh, today he gave me no trouble in the prosperity. He was so relaxed and, and uh, he was so focused. He, you know what, you never make a plan to go to the Queen's Plate because you don't know, right, what's going on there. But uh, it was beautiful. I went to the lead easy and uh, he did the job. Congratulations, Eureka, back to back Queen's Plates. Thank you very much. And I'm going to see the Queen today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's a little excited. As he should be. Here's Sandy Hawley. Sandy. Thanks a lot, Ron. Uh, Nick, uh, an amazing feeling. Uh, what's going through your head right now? I'm just kind of pinching myself all over to see if it's real. <laughs> well, you know what? He ran a tremendous race. Went wire to wire again. Was that the plan going in? I left it up to Rico, like I've been telling you in the past, you know, it was going to be a jockey's race and uh, thought we had the best jockey and it looks like we had the best horse and the best jockey. All right, well take us from the eighth pole to the wire. What were you thinking then? Well, my wife and my son and I were jumping up and down so much that uh, it's kind of just a blur in my mind now, Sandy. All right, Nick, very happy for you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks very much. All right, Ron, back to you. Nick and his wife, Martha, what a story they are. All right, so Queen's Plate 151 in the books. We get some post-race uh, feedback there, getting to hear from winning jockey Rica Rosa da Silva, winning trainer Nick Gonzalez, Jeff, and I think WOW kind of sums it up. And these are such great connections too. Nick Gonzalez, first ever Queen's yep. Plate, and he gets a win. Da Silva's only been in two Queen's Plate, and he's won both of them. It used to be a curse if you won the play trial that you had no shot in the Queen's Plates. It used to be that you wanted to finish second in the play trial. Now, three consecutive years, the play trial winner has gone on to win the Queen's Plates. We should say this is yet another wire-to-wire -wire winner on the poly track today. Yep. It's been very kind to speed horses here today. And Big Red Mike, he's thriving at the right time. Big Red Mike and Hotep were 1-2 all the way around the racetrack. Roan Inish ran an unbelievable race here today to finish in third to come from off the pace where she was, and Giants Tomb finished in fourth. But uh, Big Red Mike, here he is, and uh, Eureka Rosa da Silva uh, just does it yet again, and he's pretty pumped to meet the Queen. The final time of the race, very respectable, 2.04 and 4. Uh, the track's been producing some pretty quick clockings so far uh, today. Don Romeo, he is the big man when it comes to the Terra Racing Stable. Back-to-back -back wins for him on today's program, and so we're hoping to catch up with him momentarily, but I'm sure he's going to be a very, very happy camper. And I think it's extra special as well, Chad, that this is a homebred too. Yeah, definitely. And Big Red Mike uh, had never even been in the stakes until that plate trial, and now he sweeps that and the Queen's plate. And Big Red Mike, he just fights. As soon as he sees a horse yep. come right up to him, he just digs in and fights. So now let's go trackside, and let's get some uh, feedback from the winning owner of Terra Racing Stable. I'm here with the winning owners, Dom Romero and his wife, Doreen. Tell me how this is for you. Very exciting. <laughs> this will probably be one of the most memorable days of my life, yeah. Was it just the Queen's Plate or the Queen? Both. Both. I've been 35 years in racing and breeding. By the way, I bred this horse, which makes it that much more satisfying, you see. But certainly, uh, you know, our, our hopes are always to win the Queen's Plate. And the queen being here is just magnificent, you know. Makes it that much more exciting. Now, I know Big Red Mike has been described as a, as a fighter. Is that what you saw on the track today? Oh, yeah. I seen that in the play trial. Yeah, yeah. He's only a young, see, three-year-old, they're only young horses. And he showed me something in the, in the play trial. You said 
you've, you've been in this business now for 35 years. This means many you're going to come back. I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Ron. Well Okay, so we got some post-race coverage from owner Don Romeo, very happy, and Jeff, uh, as we expected, it makes it that much more special, not only because Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II is in attendance here this afternoon, but because this son of 10 pins is a homebred, so uh, I'm sure a lot of emotions uh, going through him and his wife right now. And this horse does have idiosyncrasies, as you can see, he might be suffering from heat stroke a little bit as well as they get the hose on this horse. It's such a warm day out there that they're going to try and get some fluids in this horse and cool him down as best as they can right now. Uh, Eureka Rosa da Silva is off, but uh, he kind of did the same thing when he went to the winner's enclosure for the play trial stakes too. He uh, kind of uh, starts and stops here, but uh, I think more than anything, he's just, he's, he's suffering from a little bit of heat stroke right now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this race uh, while we have a moment here. Big Red Mike, uh, you know, getting the lead and I'm almost wondering if things would have been different had he uh, not gotten the kind of fractions that he did. If Dark Cloud Dancer would have maybe got a better break and played the role of the rabbit like Mark Frost had hoped. Uh, they got to get the hose on this horse because he is definitely suffering some from, from some heat stroke right now and uh, they're going to get him on the walk and that's the best thing they can do is get him on the walk and get that hose on him ASAP because he is uh, definitely in uh, some discomfort right now. So they'll get the hose on him right now and uh, they'll get him all cool and calm and uh, you're right Chad. I mean obviously Dark Cloud Dancer he didn't break very well so yep. uh, nobody was able to go with Big Red Mike. Big Red Mike sets you know, legit fractions, I thought, 24 and 2, 49 and 1, 3 quarters and 114 and 1. Final time of the race was 204 and 4. But uh, d things definitely changed when the full horse didn't go after Big Red Mike. But Hotep was a lot closer to the pace today than I thought originally. And uh, Big Red Mike now looks like is uh, on the pulley track here. And uh, they're going to get the hose down. They're going to do the rest of the presentation without him because the best thing they can do right now for the horse is to get the horse back to the barn, get some uh, liquid into him, and uh, really cool him down as best as they can. All right, and Eureka Rosa da Silva joining uh, a very, very packed house in the stakes winner's circle right now. They'll go through all the presentations and all the festivities that come along with this, including uh, a greeting, a meeting with Queen Elizabeth II and uh, Eureka Rosa da Silva. We could hear in that post-race interview with Renee Kieran's awfully excited <laughs> about that opportunity. So. Uh, this is a man that we, we know he, he, uh, he's always excited and uh, he's, he's really going to take this as something very special in his career. Yeah, deservedly so. I mean, he has not been riding here at Woodbine for all that long. And for him to now have two Queen's Plate wins under yep. his belt, I mean, that just says a lot about the year that he's having so far. And uh, again, congratulations goes out to the owner, Mr. Romeo. He's been involved in this game for a long, long time. He actually first came to the, the sport and he made a couple of wages and he didn't think much of it, but then, then he came back and he started to become a bit of a fan of it and uh, now he can't get it out of his blood. It's now we take a look at uh, Mr. Wilmot to walking with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and she will make the presentation to the winning owners here with a big red mic. And uh, we should explain as well what's going on with the, the horse right now. It's so warm uh, today that this horse just ran a mile and a quarter and a, and a very good clock in that. Uh, it's like an athlete. You just you want to get them on the walk and you want to get some liquids into them and uh, he will be okay. 
Yeah, he will. Uh, he'll get through that. Uh, it's very common, especially in this kind of heat that we experience in the Canadian summers here. And uh, yeah, as Jeff pointed out, everything will be fine in there. He is just getting hosed off, and he, again, he's just kind of walking it off. He'll make his way back to the barn where he'll be treated uh, very well, and he'll get back and uh, cooled off in that spot. As again, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II making her way to the stakes winner circle right now. Uh, how about the filly? Uh, Ronan Ish, the Oaks winning Philly. Very, very good effort. I don't want to take anything away from the winner because yep. he ran an unbelievable race. But for me, one of the horses that ran one of the best races in here was Ronan Ish because she came from off the pace. She finished third on a track that's very much speed favoring here today. And uh, she ran an unbelievable race to come back on three weeks rest to face the boys like she did here today. Kudos goes to Carolyn Koskin and her crew, an unbelievable job. But uh, the hour belongs to Big Red Mike as uh, that one picks up the win. The Samson horses, they ran well too. Hotep finished in second. Giants Tomb got uh, the fourth place spot as we uh, take a look at this very special scene that uh, I'm going to frame in my mind forever because uh, obviously you were in the walking ring. I yep. had a chance to see the Queen just five feet in front of me. And this is special. Uh, we don't really have uh, the Queen coming to us here at Woodbine all that often uh, to watch a race like this. And I hope she had an enjoyable day and maybe had a couple of shekels on Big Red Mike as well. <laughs> and you know what? You, you know that you are in the presence of uh, royalty or someone very special. When you're around here today, yeah, this is something that I've never experienced, not just with the Queen here, but this kind of a crowd yeah. for a Queen's plate. It was fantastic. It was a lot of fun to be a part of. And uh, it, it, again, just felt very, very good to be around here. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not going to forget this day at all. This is a very significant victory as well for trainer Nick Gonzalez. And what a year yep. he is at. He just picked up his 1,000th win not all that long ago. And Chad, what's it going to be like at Fort Erie, his home base for the Prince of Wales Stakes, three weeks from now, when he is there? The, it's going to be a shorter distance, but well, that won't be a problem for Big Red Mike. Obviously, it's going to be a new surface, that being on the... And there's a look at Eureka Rosa da yep. Silva. I'm really enjoying the moment right now with Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and uh, deservedly so. This is a terrific moment for him. And uh, there's Mr. Romeo. And uh, in behind uh, Mr. Romeo, as well as... Uh, I believe that might be Nick Jr. if memory serves me correct. But anyways, we're we'll taking okay. a look at the rest of the presentation being made right now as we speak. There's Nick and there's Martha Gonzalez. And what a job she does. Yep. She's the assistant trainer here. She takes care of all the horses here at Woodbine, whereas uh, Nick and Nick Jr. take care of the horses down at Fort Erie as well. And uh, nice that the Queen's taking some time out of her uh, schedule here to, to share some words because she knows, being a horse racing enthusiast, what it takes to win a race like this. Yes, definitely. And uh, the breeding that comes with it as well. And uh, there will be a lot of respect, especially right there in that winner's circle right now. Uh, back to Nick a little bit in the Fort Erie angle. I know that'll be the next step for them. I don't know if he's already got a key to the city, but if he goes and wins <laughs> the Prince of Wales, he's definitely getting a key yeah, to the city. Yeah, I think he could be right. And uh, I think we know where uh, Mr. Uh, De Silva and Nick Gonzalez are going to be three weeks from now down at Fort Erie for that second jewel. And that goes shorter too, right? That's right. It's a mile and three sixteenths. It's a shorter distance. That won't be a On problem for him. And uh if anything, the real test for him could be the grass, the mile and a half events, the breeder stakes, but uh, he'll be tough coming up in that event. And who else will come out of this race? I think a lot of horses will come out of this race. I think I would go up at Hotep, Roninish. I might wait for the Wonderwear myself, get her on the grass for the third jewel of the Canadian Triple Tiara, give her a bit of a break, because that's two tough races in a row now for her, and she's run two credible races as well. Yeah, she'll miss the Bison City. That's coming up next week, and right. uh, I understand. Uh, also, Moment of Majesty will miss that race. But, yeah, I think quite a few of these horses will be heading to the Border Oval at Fort Erie in a couple of weeks to contest that second jewel of Canada's Triple Crown. And I know you've talked about it, and you love this race, that it's on three different services, because it takes a very special and talented individual to overcome that. It does. And I must admit, as we take a look at uh, Queen Elizabeth II now uh, about to leave the stage after some more uh, pictures are being made here, and a big round of applause uh, going towards Her Majesty. I think it does take a very special horse to win a, a triple crown here in Canada, and I thought the horse would regress off that play trial, but it didn't happen. With more, let's go upstairs to Dan Loisel.
Ladies and gentlemen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, and His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, will now depart Woodbine. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a late jockey change in the 11th race on 14 Sergeant Park to Tyler Pizarro. Pizarro will ride 14 Sergeant Park in race 11. <laughs> 